So tell us a little bit more. I mean, you were mentioning before the, the Finisimo Mosa S has become such an important part of the Octa Finisimo family. It is obviously marginally thicker in yeah. steel, uh, but with a screwing crown to give you 100 meters of water resistance. And it's like, it's kind of the watch you can wear with zero compromise. You can jump yeah, through exactly. the water, you can do what you want with yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. This was yeah. the, the second chapter. After the huge success right. of the Octo Finisimo, our obsession was uh, what's next. It was uh, the tourbillon in gold and after we make in titanium, uh, it was the minute repeater in titanium. It was the great success of the hour, minute and second in titanium. But you know, it's a segmenting watch because it's an ultra thin watch with a very unique design, with a very unique color. Mm -hmm. So I say, guys, in the next three, four years, we're gonna have something different because otherwise, uh, even for the client, it's gonna be important to have some, some other options. Right. So the idea was to make a slightly thicker octo finissimo to have the screen crown. So we received two comments from the beginning, the, uh, the super luminova and the screen crown. Right. But if you want to achieve some results, you have to make some compromise. It was after 2017 uh, in Basel Fair, I asked to Philippe Saltarski to make a prototype with the steel bracelet and the steel case with the double finishing. Oh, wow. And when we have seen uh, the prototype, this almost is, is exactly the same prototype, I start to wear it and on the, during the meeting, everybody say, what is that? <laughs> and this was the first surprise because we discovered that the Octo Finissimo, um, it's very chameleontic in terms of design. You change the finishing, the material of the case, and you change the color of the dial, you have a brand new watch. And the Finissimo S is uh, the perfect example because you have the steel dial, the black dial, and the blue dial. And if you compare even the steel version with the steel dial with the titanium watch, um, it's a completely different world. Completely different world and completely different client. So now the reaction that we have from the market, please don't touch the titanium because the steel oh. today is the thinnest because we don't have 100 meter water resistant, we don't have a screen crown. The market is a split in two. The watch lovers and watch collectors love the titanium because it's the milestones and because it's the thinnest. The people who love to wear the watch every day, and you can wear every day, even the titanium, but maybe as a very a smaller collection, they prefer to wear the, the Finissimo S. Yeah, it's, it's growing. You know, but you could probably be a collector that, that has both, right? Finissimo <laughs> S for you when you want to jump to the water or so on. But exactly. The titanium to keep as, as a historic reference. But honestly, I wear the titanium uh, since the beginning when the Finissimo S arrived. I used to wear the titanium. I ride my motorcycles with the titanium. It's fall down twice with the kids at wow. home. It's the, the watch, the idea was a wearable complication. So must be wearable, must be strong enough. And it was the same for the chronograph. Another success was the chronograph in titanium. So we have to say that now we have the Finissimo S, our minute and second, we must have uh, a different uh, way to wear the, the chronograph. So the steel chronograph with the screen crown, with for the first time, now we have enough room inside the dial because this is our biggest frustration. We love to make thinner watch because it's like your second skin. But on the other hand, we would love to have a lot of different features that is impossible to have. So now we use the Octo Finissimo S to made a big, a big step inside the collection with the Super Luminova hands, with the Super Luminova indexes. It's more a sport chic watch. So it's uh, for an outdoor uh, way of living. The watch, the dial, it looks simple again. We make four trials because we were not happy about the finishing. We are not happy about uh, the finishing of the indexes. And uh, this one is the best uh, Octo Finissimo S chronograph that you can, uh, that you can imagine. It's very discreet, it's absolutely very well integrated, the push button, it looks like a crown uh, protection. Uh, the push button for setting the time is like a minute repeater. Uh, we love this watch because again, uh, is, uh, we love to say that all the world record is in titanium with just one finishing. And uh, the Octo Finissimo has, it's a different way to have a monochromatic approach. It's a very different interpretation of a similar concept. Probably um, taking more from the traditional standards of watchmaking. Uh, and it's a beautiful aesthetic balance uh, between the edginess of the titanium versions and the record, the milestones, and you would probably consider as, as traditional watches. It totally bears the codes of Finissimo. Like the design is absolutely the same. It is again bearing also some elements of uh, the tradition of watchmaking. For me, it's again another step 
in the uh, installation of Bulgari among serious watchmakers. When you start to make watches, steel watches, luxury sports watches, mm -hmm. and you try to aim for perfection in the finishing of the product, and you manage to find your place in that segment, right. which is driven and led by the icons of this industry, right. that's another sign of, of our achievements. Uh, and I must say, I'm wearing the Octo S uh, steel with the blue dial, and uh, I still wear it. I'm not changing, I'm not wearing uh, one of the novelties just because I feel so comfortable with this one. It's certainly a bit more classic, but uh, to be able to create a classic in this very, very crowded environment, with all due humility, we know it takes time and we know we're on the journey, but already to be where we are is a great feeling of pride. And this watch to me is uh, symbolizing, uh, like uh, the first titanium uh, automatic watch, uh, the progression of, of the brand and the progression of the team uh, in, this, uh, in this world. So let's go from there to... Mm -hmm. The to second line. <laughs> this is an amazing, this is an amazing uh, box. Eh? <laughs> it's an amazing box. It's an amazing box. To you know that even for us, it's not so easy to have all these watches together. Okay. But you know, that's what I, you know, I mean, I feel it's a kind of a historic moment where yeah. we've united all of these, uh, these yeah, world exactly. record holders. And, and I remember when I saw for the first time the perpetual calendar that you designed, right, which incidentally um, smashed the record right. of the previous perpetual calendar that was the world's thinnest. This is 5.8 mm of thickness and is the movement just 2.75. Yeah. And it has um, two retrograde calendars, right, one for the date and one for the leap year indicator as well. Um, but I love the way you made it legible. Yeah. We start to imagine the perpetual calendar as, a, as the pinnacle of the, of the Octo collection uh, three, four years before. And we start a discussion with watch masters. Again, uh, guys, I would love to have uh, uh, readable counters. That's so because cool. Because the problem of the, of the perpetual calendar, you have so many informations. And starting from the beginning, I say we don't care about the moon. Because at the end, uh, it's the most... Uh, it's very, uh, let me say, uh, colorful. Uh, you can play with colors and different finishing, but at the end, it's a true decorative element. It also is not accurate half the time because if you live in the southern exactly. hemisphere, exactly, it's not the right. Exactly. You know? So at right. a certain point, I say, guys, I would love to have a big, uh, gigantic, huge counter for the date because right. it's the most. Uh, uh, accessible information. Always I know more or less which kind of day of the week and even which kind of month of the year. Uh, leap year is the less important one, but the date I have to, I have to read and to be able to read. So please make a big, big dial. So the idea at the beginning was to have a round shaped dial, 360 degrees. When we received the first layout, I say, guys, for me, it's not enough. Right. Why don't we move uh, the two counters from the bottom and we use the, the, the upper part of the dial to make a big uh, retrograde uh, date and say, wow, this is an amazing thing because it changed completely the face of a perpetual calendar. So again, we are looking for our iconic uh, and our unique face for the watch. And uh, the watch is, uh, is unbelievable. And again, as you can see, when we change the material of the watch, and we made even in platinum, the second series, the first one was in titanium because each record that we made must be in titanium because it's the senior, the aesthetic signature of the Octo. And the second one was the platinum one with the blue dial and the blue alligator strap. And it's a completely different watch. Absolutely. As you can see here, right. we have uh, the same watch, but ah, yes. completely different, right. completely different client completely different way to, to play with the same uh, with the same content. Absolutely, and the expression is completely... Exactly, this is a very, very interesting because the, again, the Finissimo, it looks very unique. It's very unique in terms of design, but when you change the face of the watch, you change the material, it's absolutely, it's very, very versatile. You know, the irony is that usually at the age when you can afford a perpetual calendar is the moment that you can no longer read a perpetual calendar, right? You know, <laughs> yes. and, and I can attest to that because I have several and I can't read any of them. But I love this because of its extraordinary visibility and also the artistic originality in terms of how it's displayed, you know? Yeah. And I think this is a really what you were saying, you know, it's Bulgari is um, a company that is artistic, that is elegant, that is inventive, and mechanisms also help to serve that need. And I think yeah. this is a very strong example of that. Exactly. You talked to Fabrizio, so you know the story of, of the dashboard of a motorbike. Right. And really this idea of immediately you need to be able to watch what happens like on a motorbike. So there is, the inspiration comes from functionality, right. but in a way, functionality comes from far, far, far back. And then the design mm -hmm. happens to be really driving things. And the beauty is, again, 
I'm lucky I can witness those moments where the studio team works hand in hand with the, the caliber development team and um, where they really play between the display and the association of, of, of functions. Here you have a watch that doesn't display the moon face, but conversely optimizes the use of the surface with a large display of the date and function that is very dear to us, which is the retrograde function. Right. Very cool. And somewhat with the retrograde hands uh, rotating over the axe, but coming back to the initial date, very much following the process of a speed counter. Right. And that's something that is very specific to our watch. But again, we managed to this collaboration, this collaborative approach, where there is the co-construction from a design perspective and a watchmaking perspective. That's what creates the unique look and feel of this watch compared to anything else in the market. Amazing. So Fabrizio, what I want to know is last November, we were all gathered together for the GPHG ceremony. Uh, and when it was announced that Bulgari for this extraordinary Octofinishmo perpetual calendar had won the Eguidor, the top prize, how did that make you feel? Honestly, it was amazing for us, a great achievement for a watch designer, for a watch company, maybe the biggest achievement of, uh, of the entire career. And uh, this was even my biggest challenge when I arrived in Switzerland because the design center was in Rome. And 10 years ago, 11 years ago, I decided to move to Switzerland to closer to the manufacturing side to develop this kind of watches. And uh, sometimes it's not so easy because we have to change some mindset. And at the beginning of my career, when I made sketches always, uh, sometimes uh, the reaction was uh, as impossible to do. And I say, come on guys, in, in 1969, uh, they, they were able to go to the moon. So we are just to find a way to, to do it. At the end, is a, each time is a compromise. But it was uh, for sure. Now it's uh, they are part of the challenge and they push me. But uh, for sure, the, the, the GPAG, the Equidor is, is an amazing achievement. It's uh, very emotional. You, you look at the lists of the brands that got on this pinnacle mm, right. at, at this summit. And to be one of those is like a... Un again, unrealistic. You know, you could be one of the possible. You, you know, I mean, you're delivering something that exceptional. That the team has been doing a job that is recognized. The the peers that you, I mean, you all who are close to us. You tell us that that we do something that is seriously important and making a difference. We have a long history in watches. Right. We have 100 years of history in watches. But as a watchmaker with its own tools, we have 20 years. We have the same age as what we call the independents. Mm. And the way, and there's a reason if we have a good relation with them because we, we, we somewhat bear the same philosophy. Yes. To be following Audemars Piaget and be the next one tells us how far we've gone. And, and yeah, it's very humbling and, uh, and you get very emotional about it. So it's a huge achievement. There's a huge sentiment of pride for sure. And the good thing is it was shared by all the teams, even in the stores, because we got so many uh, great feedbacks and comments from the teams. And it's something that we share all together. You know, this is beautiful as well. Those awards of the Grand Prix d'Horlogerie, this is really a moment of gathering between all the people of the manufacturer and the brand. And, and it's a moment of pride that is really shared between all of us. So it's, it's very fulfilling, really fulfilling. Uh, and that was... Uh, very memorable. I will not forget. Incredible. I just want to go back to that evening because there's a really nice moment where uh, Jean-Christophe Perrin, who as the CEO of the company, went up to receive the prize. And he came up there and one of the first things that he said was, I want to bring the individual that created this watch on stage. I want to bring Fabrizio Bonamassa on stage. How did that make you feel? No, it's uh, Jean-Christophe is very kind and uh, it was a long journey and he was part of this journey because you have to imagine the effort and the investment to produce this kind of uh, this kind of eight world record. So for sure, he is a part of the game. He's a very important part in this history because um, uh, we start to work with with Jean Christophe uh, more or less ten years ago, if I remember well, and we immediately receive an amazing uh, push in terms of uh, watches. And uh, even if the if the company is a jewelry brand, uh, but today we make these amazing timepieces and. Uh, we receive an amazing trust in terms of design, in terms of creativity, in terms of craftsmanship. To make these kind of pieces, you have to invest in the manufacturing side. So we put uh, the uh, full integrated manufacturing side. Today, we have uh, the case, the bracelet, and the dial in uh, 
in Saint-Léger and we have uh, the movement facilities for in, in Les Sentiers. We design and develop the most strategic movement in, uh, in Les Sentiers. The last one was the Piccolissimo. That now it's incredible because everybody talk about the Finissimo, but the Piccolissimo is 2.5 uh, millimeter thickness. Yes. And as a watch, as a jewelry brand, it gives you an amazing opportunity. So it's uh, for sure it was a great achievement for us. I have to say thank you to Jean Christophe uh, to to call me on on stage, and uh, but for me it was just the right push for uh, the next uh, the next challenge. So I, I want to talk to you about two watches that were launched this year to celebrate the tenth anniversary yeah. of the Octo, and they're beautiful watches in that actually I find them very emotionally touching watches as well. Um, one is, is is the automatic time in small seconds, and the other is the chronograph, but. Instead of a normal dial, these are featuring uh, the sketches that you made originally and transferred to the dial it in a way crazy. which apparently was a it nightmare. Was crazy. Because, yeah. because if you make it look too much like a sketch, yeah. it, it's you know, hard to but read. The problem is when you make a sketch with the marker, you start to make a sketches in this way. Right. So as you can see, it depends even on how many inks uh, do you, have, uh, you have in the markers. But look here, the line is so blue and deep. And look at here, the line is, the stroke is almost transparent. Right. And when you push these kind of things, and when you have uh, these kind of constructions, as you can see, it's not so easy to have these uh, dynamic strokes, dynamics uh, on, the, on the dial. So we start to have uh, some, uh, some trials, and I say, Guys, you know, I am not happy because the dial is abs the drawing is absolutely flat, and uh, I need a certain uh, dynamics in terms of uh, of strokes. I want to see, and um, I want to read very very easily the time, the twelve, the six, and maybe I'm less interested in the construction lines. Yes. So we make more or less, if I remember well, it was six or seven <laughs> months to develop this dial because, uh, as usual, I'm never satisfied. But in a certain moment, uh, we had the right fine tuning, and this is an amazing job that the product development made with Philippe and with uh, and with Thomas to make this dial uh, uh, absolutely amazing, absolutely uh, very very difficult. As usual, the very simple things are the most difficult to do. <laughs> it's extraordinary, and I love this because it, you feel like you have a touch of the the very first initial steps yeah. it, when you were first creating this watch yeah. and to come full circle now it really is it's an amazing journey right yeah and, and the fact that these sketches are so you know they're lines but they're also a form of expression emotional expression I think also unites us with that whole you know analogy to the impressionist to begin with it comes in obviously the the time and, and the chronograph. yeah I remember the first meeting we presented the first chronograph and at a certain moment Jacques Christophe said the dial is amazing but please I need I have to be able to read the time in a precise, <laughs> precise way because you know you cannot make indexes you have to find a way to manage this kind of uh, uh, heart expression yes. or this kind of sketch. Exactly. Tell me about these watches that so, feature Fabrizio's designs. So we have the 10th anniversary of Octo, and then we say, oh, okay, it's only the 10th anniversary. It yeah. seems that it's been such a long history, but it's only 10 years. Right. And in the way, it's 10 years, you should celebrate. So his first reaction is, <laughs> bah, <laughs> bah. Why, why would we celebrate? Anyway, and, and I, what I love is he goes in his office and it's, there's some kind of a silence pause of, of <laughs> days or weeks. And then he comes to the office and says, I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I love when he comes with it. And he's got, of course, he's got the drawing. And I said, so what is the element of birth of a watch, if not the sketch? Yes. And he said, uh, and he said, but, <laughs> okay. So, so, and then he says, well, I, I, I suggest we put the sketch into the watch. So it, show, it takes us back to the very first day of the it. creation. And it's like, that's crazy, but I love it. Unperfect, like a sketch, yeah. and it's perfect in the same yes. way. And uh, technically, never done because I mean, we are in the world. We are in Switzerland. Everything's neat and perfect. Right. So to bring in something that is actually not <laughs> neat and perfect <laughs> is probably a way. Again, the Italian perspective yes. on the Swiss watchmaking, yes, but from a really creative way. And and uh, I must say, I mean, we just we just say, of course, of course, it makes it makes sense. There's always. There's always some kind of rationality in the designs of Fabrizio. 
and, and but also a lot of poetry. And, and the balance of the two, those two is exactly, for me, the result of this watch. So, so charming. And I think that everyone who came to Rome to look at these watches, and subsequently everyone you know, in the world, as it was blasted through social media, had a huge <laughs> smile yes. on their face. Yes. I, I, I can only imagine how you are managing the discrepancy between the vast number of people that would like to purchase one uh, it's an and the finite number of watches that you have. Listen, it's a good problem to have. But sometimes we're surprised. But for the people who have been part of this history, it's a great recognition and a real reward. There is a growing appreciation and the best sign of the success of your creations. And again, for, for Fabrizio on one hand, for Philippe, for Julien Alfredo, for the guys at the manufacturer on the other side, for Francesco also in the, team, uh, in the studio, for the marketing teams, all those guys, the beauty of this uh, appreciation it's another way to reward the work done in a different perspective, but like the, the Guido. Absolutely. 